Good morning all. I still need to fix this Maplin 10 amp continuous ha 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 automatic battery protector low voltage it turns the relay off if the source battery goes to too low a voltage. Here's the original plug that came with it which melted at 10 amps. Here's the replacement cheapy cheap eBay uh, UK seller actually it was plug which also melted at 10 amps and here's the one remaining because I bought two of these plug and I've got one chance to get this right now so let's do it so let's lift this out of here uh, just want to push that LED out and I can lift all the parts out of this one and drop them straight in the second one so let's do that so here's my plan. Now I'm going to cheat ever so slightly. I'm going to put this pip from the old one which failed and I've drilled a small hole in the end inside the spring simply because it fits inside the spring. <laughs> it fitted inside the other one. This one's not so much. Yeah it does fit in there and the spring slides over the little pip. Now this pip wasn't intended to be in this position. It actually sticks out of the end of the tip. But because it fits in there so well, I'm going to solder the braid into the end of that pip, have it come down in the middle of the spring and just come out short of the end. And then I'm going to solder the braid as close as possible to the positive on this flat piece of steel. Because again, this is steel. I mean, it's it's very large surface area still, but I'm going to bring the braid round to here and just solder it close to the positive connection. So just trying to get the LED to sit in its little hole like so and so that's all the pieces in place the spring is going to sit in there now I want to keep the fuse because obviously I want a fused plug and because the spring has a sort of floating end the fuse should sit on that little pip that little nipple I suppose it is um, with a good contact between the fuse and it and then I just need a piece of braid to run round there and attach to that point. So it's going to be quite a short piece. I'll cut a piece of braid. Thank you for your comments, incidentally. Uh, like, is it, is it a steel braid or is it proper copper? Well, it doesn't appear to be steel because that's a magnet. Do you know, I'm tempted to double this up. So let's see if I've cut this piece long enough. I'll fold it. I'll try and get these two ends up inside the little hole in my spring pip tip up inside there and solder it inside there I'll attempt that first right down at the bottom left hand corner is my little pip sat in a piece of wood but I want this hotter again All right let's see if I can get some solder in here I don't quite know the best way to do this really. Press it against one side possibly. It's not taking. Oh, it's taking. I think that is soldered. Well, I melted the mat there and a little bit of green mat has got onto here, but I don't think it's a problem. What's probably more of a problem is solder has run down the wick, the braid, and so it only bends at that point but that should be enough for the spring where is the spring here it is so I think what I want to do is pass the braid through fairly near the bottom I'm gonna to have to put a little bend on the end of it uh, fairly near the bottom like say there get that inside the spring if it'll go inside oh come on and now I want to run this braid up here onto the flat of this steel. So I'll probably pre-tin this steel here and uh, push the blade braid onto it. The only trouble is this thing sitting here is very close and the braid of course can slightly flex. So I'm just wondering whether I need to perhaps put an insulating sleeve over there. I'll probably do that at the end. Let's just get this braid soldered onto here first. Okay, I'm going to solder as close to this as possible. Although, as I say, it's a very large surface area here, so I shouldn't have too much trouble. 
main problem is holding everything still. Okay, I think that's good enough. Now I need to just fill the braid with solder at that end. But I don't want it to run too far up because I don't want it all to lose its flexibility. And now solder this down onto there. Ah! This time hold it with my thumb, but that'll probably be a bad idea as it all gets very hot. Stay in there. Is that a successful solder joint? A 10 amp solder joint. And now a little bit of heat shrink on this negative, which isn't connected. It's just a dummy, but it's got B there, I suppose. That looks pretty good. So here it is. The inverted pip there will sit on the end of the fuse and it should sit really straight and flat. The fuse will push the spring down. I don't want to push it too hard, otherwise actually it won't fly out anymore because it's got the braid on it. But the braid connects the metalwork at the end of the fuse directly, not through the spring, and onto that solder point, which is very close to the incoming positive. The LED is attached down there. So that, I think, should work. This is the 10 amp fuse that was in the original plug. Let's close it all up and test it. Yeah, I think the heat shrink around the end of this uh, negative connection is slightly interfering, but I think I should be able to close this up. The other thing I'm concerned about is that the fuse doesn't push in quite as far as I'd like, because I think the back end of the uh, soldered braid into the tip, the, the tip which I turned the other way around and put in the end of the spring, is a bit hard. But let's just see whether that works as a compressible tip. Mm, not a lot. It compresses but only by a couple of millimeters. It might be enough. Let's give it a try. Well I just tried it off camera and silly me, I put one of the 5 amp fuses in so that blew. Now the problem with this fuse is it's slightly bigger but uh, let's see if that fits in there and I will put the camera on my test setup. Oh, that's rock hard now. That has no movement at all. Well, I've just jabbed it down on the desk and I've now got, I don't know, half a millimeter of movement. That'll have to do. Let's see if it works. Here we go. There's my little Maplin thing. There's my fan heater. Switch on the DC. That's come on. And the fan's on. I can hear that running. 136 watts on the unit, 143, 144, 146, <laughs> 147 seems to be the trigger on this unit and it's cut off. So now what seems to be happening is the ever so slightly improved resistance lowering in this plug means that the whole original concept of adding this bit of resistance to this heater fan to try and keep it below the cutoff threshold of this power bank isn't working anymore. Oh joy! This plug though doesn't feel too hot. Ever so slightly warm on the tip, but no that feels all right. I think that may have done the trick, but it's overridden the whole principle of this experiment, which was to add this wire of resistance to the fan circuit to not trip the uh, overload. Incidentally, I don't know whether you saw this on my desk. This is a fuse which I ripped the innards out of, so I tore all the fuse wire out of there and soldered a little piece of that braid across the exposed tips at the top. Right, I think I've solved the problem of overloading this unit by adding another extension lead. I've got this um, one to three way cigar plug splitter. So that's, oh, I think I've just pressed the uh, touch screen. So that's added a little bit more resistance. So now I can run this thing pretty much continuously and see if this plug gets hot and that doesn't feel like it's getting hot at all. Let's run it for a while. Let me see the clock. Let's move in so that you can see the clock. 
Well, that's interesting. Uh, this plug isn't getting hot at all. That's fine. But the wire's pretty warm. And this plug, uh, this plug is now feeling really quite hot. So, oh, crikey. That fuse is red hot. So I've slightly rearranged it now. I've got my one to three way splitter here. This is my modified plug. And that feels absolutely fine. As I say, this wire is quite warm, but that plug doesn't feel like it's getting hot at all. And that fan heater is on and warm. Still got my dodgy braid fuse in there. Yeah, so I would say that's a success. This plug is staying cool. Now, what about this plug up here? Um, it's warm doesn't feel burning hot and the whole system is drawing 143 watts so yeah I think that's a success my modified plug can handle 10 amps and this fuse which isn't a fuse it's just a piece of soldered on braid that's not getting hot at all I can hold that yeah that's staying cold so it's good conductive copper definitely the other thing which I think is an issue here is if I go into data, inverter and charger info and DC output, you can see this is actually 13.3, 13.4 volts. It's quite a bit higher than 12 volts, putting out 144 watts. So it's all running a little bit over the level that it should be running at. And actually there's the current, it's 10.9, so I mean it's pushing 11 amps slightly over 10 and it's all warm I mean this is actually no that's not too bad this plug I think it's warm because the cables getting warm and this plug up here is warm but it's all just sort of hanging in there 